Hello friends, my name is Christopher. Today I'm going to talk to you about building an arbor and a big old garden gate for your fence. This gate is a piece of artwork, let me tell you. This is the seventh video in a deeper dive series that I've done on my whole great big fence project. Um, check those out, links of course into the description and such. If you like this, you're probably thinking about building a fence. So I've got a whole bunch to talk about, let me get right to it. Um, the gate was one of the worst parts of the last fence. Whenever there was something that sucked with the old one, I overcompensated in the new one. My last gate had a prefab door. It was pretty narrow. It was more narrow than one of these. Uh, and it was only six feet tall, so I had to duck actually to get out underneath it. I'm six foot four and change. Um, and it, it sagged. It was built very poorly. It didn't have any a proper cross structure on the back. I mean, it had an X like this, but it wasn't built properly. You can see how nicely my gate swings. I'm pretty proud of that. You can kind of get a feel for the perspective here. The thickness of this particular gate, it's a two by four, uh, sub fascia, and then main fascia exterior. These are three quarters of an inch. So it's a three inch door at its thickest part. When I was designing my fence, we decided on doing a double gate instead of a standard single door. That's because I anticipate a future need where I might need to get, get a gator back here, get a leveler back here, drive a small truck back here, whatever, you name it. I've got just shy of eight feet between two posts and eight feet from the surface level to the bottom of the arbor. You can fit just about anything you need into that square size. The construction of the doors is relatively simple. It was one of the most enjoyable parts of this whole process for me because I like doing fine woodworking in addition to larger carpentry projects like this. And I actually got to do some fine woodworking here. So let's start with the back, right? So I kept the, the actual skeleton, the frame on the inside here. Although it looks beautiful, this could be the exterior surface if you wanted it to, nobody would complain. It's all cedar, um, so it's very lightweight but sturdy. You start with the frame. Everything else is going to be based off of this. A, a, a good frame is crucial so that your door uh, will not sag or will sag very little over the life cycle of your fence. How do you do that? Lots of different things. So first off, you can see I've got two main two by fours vertical on either end, and I have one, two, three supporting pieces. You only need two. I've got three because I had this decorative viewfinder here at the top. I did half lap joints to join these, so I did that with a dado stack on my table saw downstairs in my workshop. You could easily do that kind of cut with a circular saw and a setup with your power tools outside, but for me I just felt more comfortable bringing it downstairs, throwing on the stack and doing it on my table saw. Uh, a lap joint with glue and screws makes this incredibly strong and rigid. It's a much better choice than just having a vertical board and taking your horizontal 2x4, putting it on top of it and then screwing into it because in that case you're just relying on the sheer strength of the screws and in time I mean that'll fail that'll warp for the rigidity in addition to those lap joints we've got the cross braces going here you can see how I just put a 2x4 underneath the frame underneath the, the big square here rectangle when it was done and then I marked out these cuttings took into my chop saw cut them put the big long one in first and this one in second no glue all screws. Now these are pressure fitted into the corners, which is another thing that will keep them from sagging, right? The sagging is going to happen further away from the hinges, right? But if this sags, any pressure downward here is going to be counteracted because it's supported in the corners all the way around. These are supported additionally by the subfascia on the front, right? All of these boards are screwed into the frame here, so that's their secondary purpose. Now, if you cut that corner, of course you could just screw into the top here and the bottom, but the center of your door would kind of wobble like that, and it would look stupid. So don't skip that step. In some of the time-lapse footage and whatnot, you can see me putting on the, the sub fascia after I've mounted the, the actual hinges. The hinge mounting process was pretty straightforward. I found a level that I liked. I, I used a whole bunch of clamps. I made sure it was plumb and level, and then you, you just screwed and attached it. 
If you have a second person, that would be very helpful. Otherwise, you know, prop it up as you see fit. I kept a good amount of clearance down here. I've got ooh, three inches or so, right? But I've got a slope going up there. This opens outward for me, as you can see. It was the right call. Especially with snow and stuff piling up over the winter, I just want as much airflow under here as I can get. I don't care about small animals, critters crawling underneath it. They would get under anyways, right? So uh, it's more important that it doesn't have as much contact with the ground. That'll reduce rot and improve the lifetime of the, of the gate. So I did the vertical paneling and then I did my, my true fascia, sub fascia, main fascia. I guess those are medical terms, but they work for me. Um, this is both aesthetically pleasing and it hides the two by four, right? So this one by six strip here is hiding this two by four, ditto with the top uh, and the bottom. So from the outside, it just looks absolutely perfect. Same with the inside. Um, What's uh, What else? When I close this gate, there's about a finger width in between, so we're looking at about half an inch between here. Uh, I th it, it looks great, A, and I'm certain that they're not going to expand to that extent uh, and bump in with each other. Pretty confident with that, but I didn't want to get them too close together. Don't want them rubbing, don't want them expanding into each other, etc. For a locking mechanism, I built mine out of uh, scrap 2 by cedar. So this is, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's just a bolt, it goes through. I've got a pin on the other end, right here. Goes through, locks it from the inside. These are also custom handles made from two by cedar. And I wanted something that would fit my big hands. So I positioned them appropriately on both ends and uh, they're, they're solid as a rock. Additionally, I put cane bolts on the bottom of each of these, and in the ground I have galvanized po uh, just 18 inches going in. This is a stopgap measure just for this year. I live in Wisconsin. We have you know deep freezes and such, but next year I'm going to um, regrade the slope here, and when that is finished, I'll actually put these in concrete and use longer posts. So next year I'll be digging them out. But as a stop stopgap measure, it works really well. You can see this is this is perfectly fine, well locked. And how about that arbor? I wanted to make sure that my posts, first off, were super rock solid. So I have four by four posts for the rest of the fence. These are six by six, and they're about three feet into the ground. I went very, very deep here uh, because they go up more than eight feet tall from the surface up. Um, I just wanted something simple but a little bit showy, I guess. So this is, uh, this is a two by eight, 12 footer going across, which I had cut down. Um, and then of course the perpendicular pieces up there as well. It's both aesthetic and then the function is providing the rigidity. Maybe I'll have some flowering plant growing up there in the future, who knows? Either way, it makes for a very showy entrance. Of course, this entire project here was sealed with an exterior grade sealant uh, rated for my area for extending the life of your cedar projects. If you're gonna put the money into it, you might as well put that extra step, make sure they look nice. I think that's about it. You like what I did? Would you have done something differently? Leave a respectful comment down below letting us know. Have you done anything like this? Uh, I mean, compared to all the garden gates in my area, this is the creme de la creme. Uh, it would have cost probably a lot of money had I hired a contractor for it, but it's, I mean, it's custom, custom carpentry. That's, that's what you get. And it was fun for me. So I hope you like it. I certainly do. Uh, simple design that works with everything else. Thanks a lot for watching. This is uh, the last video in this series of deep dives. Be sure to check out the other ones. A long video on this whole 400 foot worth of fence and a very condensed version if you're short for time. Check those out as well. Don't know why I went into a terrible Irish accent there, but I did. So, I've been Chris. Good talking to you. Have a great day. Bye.